When we're kids and we're supposed to tell grown-ups who we want to be when we grow up, we usually say, you know, stereotypical things like, I want to be a doctor, uh, a firefighter, a lawyer, and we kind of have an idea of what it means to be a doctor or a firefighter. It means that you will have to save people's lives, you'll have to study a lot, you'll have to withstand the, the view of blood and injuries and help people in the most traumatic moments of their lives, same as for firemen and women. But when people tell me, I want to be a data scientist, what should I do? I'm getting a bit puzzled because I have this feeling that this is similar to two different ways of wanting to be a lawyer, for example. One way is wanting to help people to fight off the unjust things that happen to them, wanting to crack very complicated cases, wanting to prove the truth. And then there is another version where you watched, for example, Suits or any other kind of lawyer drama, like Good Wife or whatever you're into, and you get this cool feeling of like, Ooh, if I'm gonna be a lawyer, I will be wearing the super cool suits all the time, walking around in high heels, working from a super high skyscraper in Manhattan and just like be this cool, uh, busy bee. Clearly, if you hire a lawyer, you probably want the first lawyer who came to be a lawyer because they wanted to help people. And I feel there is the same puzzle with data science. A lot of people say they want to be data scientists, but in the end, they kind of don't know what they will be doing and what they will be working with and what kind of tasks they need to do, what kind of skills they need to acquire to be a data scientist. So I wanted to encourage you to think in a big different way. Instead of wanting to be a data scientist, think about whether you want to do data science, whether you want to do data analytics, machine learning, engineering, research, research science. Try to think about it not in a way that I want to be a data scientist, what should I do? Um, more in a way that I want to do this specific thing. Like I like to look at data and find patterns. How can I apply this skill into the job that I will be, will be doing? It doesn't matter how the job is called to some extent. Yeah, probably in some cases that affects your salary and your prestige, but it's more important that you like doing it and know that it entails this specific set of tasks and skills that you need to have for this job. And to give you a little bit better idea, I defined five main areas that you will have to work in that five different things that you will have to do a lot when you're a data scientist, data analyst, machine learning engineer, AI researcher, any of those different categories or types of data scientists. If you don't like any of them and if you can't tolerate any of them, maybe you don't want to be data scientist, but you want to do some other parts that are related to data science. So first thing first is programming coding. You will have to do a lot of programming. And here I don't necessarily mean classical software development. So you don't have to be a really good software engineer. You don't have to know how to build gigantic, super complicated systems with uh, hundreds of people working on them. That's very unlikely. Maybe in some companies, data scientists do that, especially if they are more like machine learning engineers and have to implement models in production. But in general, most likely you won't have to do a very core and very intense software development, but you will have to use programming and coding skills a lot. You will have to sit days and days on end in front of the computer and write those SQL queries and try to figure out whether you covered everything, whether you made any mistakes, try to figure out what are the bugs that you might have. Maybe spend hours debugging this regex expression that you need to use to extract a very specific type of string from the data source for the analysis that you're doing. Or maybe you'll inherit someone else's code and you'll have to also debug and redo like hundreds and hundreds of lines of someone's code, whether that's for a pipeline or for analysis or for a machine learning model. You will have to spend a lot of time looking at code, writing code, trying to understand someone else's code. It may not be really good code because remember, a lot of data scientists are not software engineers, so they do programming on a different level for different purposes. 
you will have to do a lot of debugging. You will have to write a lot of questions and you will have to ask a lot of questions. You will maybe sound silly to someone who knows software development because their skill level is just different from yours. You will have to spend a lot of time on Stack Overflow to, trying to find that answer that works for your specific case. If you don't like that, if you feel like code and coding and spending time in front of your computer for hours trying to debug some weird error that you don't know where it came from. If it's not fulfilling for you, maybe data analytics is not as much for you as you might think. And then clearly an advice to figure out whether it's something for you is just to try it out. Try to write a simple program, try to write simple SQL queries, try to build a little application, write a little script that automates something or analyzes something. That's always a good idea to understand whether you like doing it or not. Second thing is statistics and mathematics. There are also quite a few people who ask whether um, a basic or low level in understanding math and statistics is okay for a data scientist. And my answer here is kind of yes. So it's not necessarily to be really good in applied mathematics and statistics, know all the concepts by heart, be able to write the formulas for p-values on the whiteboard. You don't have to do that. But here, the really important part is that you will have to understand those things very, very, very well. So you'll have to be open into the world, to the world of reading a lot of documents, books and papers on statistics, on different regression models. You'll have to learn how to use them. You don't necessarily have to know them right away, especially for the entry level positions, but you will we'll have to understand those things. And if you don't like that, if you remember your statistics class in school, you remember this, this example that the teacher gave you about like hypothesis testing, like this medicine is tested against this medicine and the efficiency of this medicine is like 0.05% more, whether you need to identify whether this is a significant result or not. And you remember sitting in the class and thinking like, oh my God, why should I do that? This is so boring. If you don't feel like you want to get into those sometimes complicated, sometimes not that complicated, but very, very crucial and important statistical and mathematical concepts, then maybe data analysis and data science is not for you. Again, try it out. This is something that you'll have to do at work and you'll be a better data analyst and data scientist if you are understanding those concepts. And if you're able to read papers, scientific papers, try to understand them. Yes, they are sometimes written in a very scientific way, an academic way, and it's hard to understand them, but from time to time, you'll have to do that. And if it's something that makes you miserable, maybe it's not for you. On that note, not only you should be able to understand those concepts yourself, but you should be able to explain them to the people with even less technical background. So people who have no idea about uh, the statistical concepts, they don't really make, they didn't major in math or even so software development, could be maybe a UX designer or an artist that you work with on the product that you're analyzing, you will have to do a lot of explanation, a lot of explaining of your own work, but also of the different concepts that impacted your work. What is data bias? What is p-value? Why we can't evaluate the significance of the experiment with only this amount of people? Why do we need to run an experiment for maybe a week or two or maybe a month? How we decide how many users we need in this experiment? How do we decide how long we should run it for? All those things, you should not only understand it yourself, but also be able to calmly, consistently, and nicely explain it to other people. You will have to do a lot of writing. You will have to do a lot of presentations. You'll have to write clearly and kind of move away from the academic way of writing scientific papers into a more clear, more understandable, more short, more summarized version that is still covering all the assumptions that you made when you did the research and all the caveats that are there. That is understandable for a 
as wide audience as possible. So there will be CEOs and C-level executives very busy reading your report on their mobile phone from a very small screen. There will also be very knowledgeable and very experienced researchers and research scientists, maybe statisticians reading the same report. And your report usually will have to satisfy all the ranges of people in between and be clear, concise, understandable and understood in the same way. So different people should not be able to make different conclusions based on your research and your report. You will also have to do a lot of presentations, short elevator pitches of the analysis that you've done, as well as a long in detail, depth in depth, walk through the code that you used for the analysis. Everything on this range will be a part of your job, most likely. If you don't like it, if you don't like to write documentation, if you don't like to create presentations, if you don't really like to present to people in person, it might be really tough because this is a really important part of the wor work that you will be doing as a data analyst, data scientist, maybe even AI researcher. Not only it's the work itself, but also the application of the work to the real world, the way you can explain things to the people who work with you. So if you don't like that as well, maybe really tough to train and test that skill, try to do presentations to your classmates, your colleagues, your friends, maybe, maybe not, maybe not a presentation to your friends, but yeah, classmates and colleagues try to do more presentations, take an article or a scientific paper about the concept that's interesting for you, try to break it down, understand it and present it in a more concise and simple way. If you would like doing that, perfect amazing if you don't if you feel like it's a struggle if you don't really understand the value of it again it might be really tough to be a data scientist especially in the company that evaluates the performance of their products part four i think i said five in the beginning but now i realize i only have four <laughs> parts that i wanted to cover here but okay then part four that kind of extracts again from the previous one not only you'll have to explain your research your analysis or whatever to your stakeholders you'll have to also do the so-called stakeholder management or plainly put it's a negotiation you will have to talk a lot to again people of very different backgrounds with very different goals with very different restrictions of different types of work that they're doing and not only explain what you did and why you think it's relevant but also Make sure that they understand it correctly and that they make the right decision based on your analysis and your report. So you will have to talk to people a lot. You will have to try to convince them, but also try to understand their perspective. And in some cases, pick your battles and not always try to push your agenda and make sure that the right decision is made based on your data, because there might be other concepts and other areas that affect the decision making in the company. There might be like restrictions restrictions or time constraints that you will have to rely on and that you will have to take into account. So it's not just the negotiation. It's also like making sure you understand whether it's the right time to do the negotiation. So choosing the right time to put push for your agenda or push for your analysis, choosing the right way of analyzing something as well. Like a very, very common scenario is when something is built like a new feature for the product you're working on is built but you might not be able to do a A-B test to evaluate the performance of that feature because for example a marketing campaign is going out worldwide and you can't say that some people won't get the feature because you need to test the you know what's the impact of that feature or maybe there are ethical issues when um, testing for example price changes because of the price discrimination so you'll have to be flexible you'll have to understand the limitations of the business and the teams you're working with uh, and not always push your agenda but you will spend quite a bit of time on this on the stakeholder management and negotiation and to make that easier for you as well, you'll have to invest a lot of time into building relationships with your colleagues, with the people you work with, maybe with your clients, building relationship in the way that they understand the value of the work you're providing, that they are flexible into allowing maybe the team to spend more time in building this feature, but then you will have a better tracking to 
better evaluate the performance of the feature. All these things are like a piece of a giant puzzle that have to come to fit in together, but also a piece of the puzzle where you can randomly cut out a little bit of the, the little jigsaw pieces. I don't know. It's a bit complicated and a little bit tactic and messy, but if you feel like this is again a struggle for you, or maybe if you don't have that skill yet, it's something that's really good to acquire before you become a data analyst or a data scientist. Again, coming to the point number three, a lot of talking with a lot of very different people with very different goals and backgrounds. And this is something you will have to do at your work as well. So those are probably four main areas where you need to test whether you like to do all of them. Maybe some of them are a little bit less of an interest for you. Maybe some a little bit more of an interest for you. And that I can actually give you an idea and direction on what kind of data scientist would you like to be. Uh, if you like to do presentations and do the stakeholder management, maybe you will be more of a business performance analyst, business performance manager, where you have the background in analytics and data science, but you can also spend a lot of time managing projects. If you are more into coding than maybe software developer with an inclination to building data products is something that's more interesting for you. So now I'm actually very curious to know if you feel like you want to be a data scientist, but you don't know what you need to, to study and to learn to become one, please reply to me in the comments saying, what do you think is data scientist? Like, what do you think data scientists do? Thank you for watching. Hope this was useful and have a nice day.